This video is over lesson 95, combining rational expressions with unlike denominators, and it's for my Algebra 1 class. So before we dive into uh, the actual lesson, I want to do a little background. Uh, we're going to start very simple. So remember that when we talk about rational expressions, you should be thinking fractions. A rational number is any number that can be expressed as a fraction using integers. So we're thinking fractions. So if I go to add, or excuse me, subtract 5 eighths minus 1 sixth, you all should know that in order to do this, we have to have common denominators. And so I'm going to take my 5 eighths and multiply it by a form of 1. And then I'm going to take my 1 sixth and multiply that by a form of 1. So that way I'll have the same denominator. So in order to find the denominator, we need to find the LCD or at least it's helpful to find the LCD. LCD stands for least common denominator, and it really is the same thing as the LCM. So with a denominator of eight and a denominator of six, I'm looking for the LCM, the least common multiple, or the least common denominator of eight and six. So remember the way that we've learned to do this in class is through prime factorization. So if I have eight, eight is really two to the third power, and six, is really 2 times 3. So therefore my LCM is going to take each of these prime factors, so it's going to take the 2, it's going to take the 3, but then it's going to give each of them the highest exponent. So the highest exponent on my 2's is a cube, the highest exponent on a 3, well it's just 3 to the first power. So that is going to be my least common denominator. So if I look over here then, I have 5 eighths, this is 2 to the third power, so I already have the 2 to the third power, I just need a 3 that's multiplied with that. And then over here for 1 sixth, 6 already has a 2 and a 3, so it's got a 2 and a 3, so I need two more 2's, well 2 2's, it's 4. And so then if I simplify this, I'm going to get 15 24 minus 4 24 and then, of course, remember once we have a common denominator, the denominator is going to stay the same, so this is still going to be 20 fourths. But now we're ready to subtract the numerators. So 15 minus 4 is 11. Now, I know that you could have done this a lot faster than going through the, the LCM, the LCD, but it's important for what we're about to do to establish these basics that we often just gloss over and move on. So realistically, if you were to have done this on paper, um, I... I would recommend your work actually look something more like that. Um, so if you're going to show your forms of one, you've got your two fractions written, you've got your forms of one, you got the results, you get the answer. Really at your level, um, if you were to do this with all numbers, I, I wouldn't even need to see your forms of one. I, I trust that you can figure that part out. So that's a little bit more condensed. Okay, But I do it this way to set it up for what's coming next. So that's our first bit of review. And now I want to do a little bit more with the, L, the concept of LCD or LCM. So I'm going to say, let's say we've got a problem. We're trying to find the LCD. And one fraction has a denominator of x squared minus 25. And then the other one has a denominator of 4x minus 20. So the idea here, just like before, is we want to prime factorize this. Well, first of all, just uh, see if there's anything you can factor out of each term. So with my first expression, no, I cannot factor anything out of each term. For my second expression, I can factor a 4 out of each of those. So now down here, if I factor a 4 out, that'll leave me with x minus 5 which cannot be factored in further. Now I'm going to come up here and see if I can factor this. With an x squared minus 25, hopefully you notice that both of these are perfect squares. So this is a difference of squares, and we should have it memorized by now that a difference of squares is a product of conjugates. So an x minus 5 and an x plus 5. So putting this together, for my LCD, and we could turn this into 2 squared 
Um, it's not really going to matter all that much here, um, but we could. So putting this together for my, my LCD, I've got a 2 squared here, or 4. And then remember that each of these factored polynomials, if it is completely factored, is considered a prime. So x plus 5, since it cannot be factored any further, is considered a prime. So I'm going to have x plus 5 here. And then x minus 5, again, since it can't be factored, is considered a prime. So each of these has an x minus 5. And then remember, we give everything its highest exponent. Well, the highest exponent on x plus 5 is just a single one. And the highest exponent on x minus 5 still is also just an invisible single one. So this right here would be my LCD, my least common denominator. I'm going to try out one more. And we're going to go with uh, x squared minus 36 and x squared plus 6x. So first things first again, we want to consider is there anything we can factor out of each term? Is there anything we can factor out of each of these terms? So as I look up top, no. If I look at the bottom though, yes, I can factor an x out of each of these and that'll become x times x plus 6. Now, can I factor this further? No, x plus 6 is as far as we can go there. Up top, hopefully you recognize, again, we have a difference of squares. So this is going to be x plus 6 times x minus 6. So putting it together, variables are also considered prime. Since we don't know what the variable is, we don't know what can go into it, which means that the only things I can definitely divide by would be 1 and x. So we consider variables and expressions that are factored prime. So I'm going to have an x, I'm going to have an x plus 6, I'm going to have an x minus 6, and then the highest exponent on each of these is just a single 1. So that would be my LCD right there. So with that review out of the way, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the practice problems from this lesson. So if you'll open up, let's see, uh, what page is that? That is page 634. Page 634, pause the video to flip over to it. And I'm going to get started right now. So A says find the LCD for each expression. So I'm going to go 5x over 5x minus 45 minus 44 over x squared minus 81. Oops, sorry, 81. I don't know how I got a 6 there. And so Doing it this way, um, I could go ahead and do my, my LCD down here. So LCD down here, um, we have my 5x minus 45, which a 5 can come out of both of those. That'll make x minus 9 left over. And then x squared minus 81 is a perfect uh, difference of squares. So that's going to be x plus 9 and x minus 9. So the LCD here would be, well, I've got a 5, and I got an x plus 9, and I got an x minus 9. Highest exponent on all those? 1, which means that's my LCD. Now, normally I would be okay with you writing LCD here and having those. So let's just take our red pen here. So normally, if a problem just asks you for the LCD, I'd be happy with that being your work. However, for practice sake, we're actually going to go a step further here with this problem, and we actually are going to subtract these. So in order to subtract them, I'm going to go ahead and take these, and I'm going to change the denominators into their factored forms. So I'm going to have 5x over 5 times x minus 9. And then we know we're going to multiply by a form of 1. So I'm going to leave space for that form of 1 right there. And then minus 44 over 
x plus 9 times x minus 9. And again, I'm going to have a form of 1 there. Now looking at the denominators and knowing what my LCD is, we need to fill in what's missing. Okay, or another way of looking at this is once these are factors, um, what does this have that this one's missing? So uh, they both have an x minus 9, but this one is missing an x plus 9. So this needs to have an x, oh, I guess it's just single, I know me, I don't need to have the parentheses. So I'm missing an x plus 9 over here. On the other side, so what does this have that this is missing? So they both have an x plus 9, but this has a 5 that this does not. So actually this, I can shorten my fraction bar there a good bit. We're just missing a 5. So in the end, if we put these together, we should get our LCD. Now, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of lock that off a little bit. And I'm going to come over here and continue. So now we simplify. So simplifying is going to require us to up top do some distributing. So I'm going to have a 5x squared and then 5x times 9 would be a 45x. We know that the denominator is going to be a 5 times x plus 9 times x minus 9 and actually, it's going to be the same for both of these. So at this point, if you feel comfortable with it, I would be okay with you go ahead and, and putting these two fractions together. If you'd rather simplify them first and then subtract the numerators, that's just fine too. But up top here, I'm just going to have a 5 times 44. So 5 times 40 is 20. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 40 is 200. So 220. And we're subtracting it. And so from there, um, just like when you add or subtract fractions, you need to check and see if you can reduce them further. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and factor my numerator. So I see that I can pull a 5 out of each of these. That will leave me with an x squared plus 9x. And then 5 would just go back into that 44 times. And that's going to be all over our denominator here. Well now that we have things being multiplied together on the top and the bottom we can start reducing some things. So I can see here my fives are going to reduce, they're gone. Well looking at that numerator I'm going to consider can I uh, factor this further. So 44, uh, the first thing I'm going to think about is 4 times 11. So since it's a negative one of those will have to be negative. But then when I add those two numbers together, I'll have to get a positive 9. So I, I'm thinking about positive 11 and negative 2. So I can turn this into an x plus 11 times x minus 2 all over x plus 9 times x minus 9. And then we look to see if we can reduce further. And unfortunately, that's as far as we can go. So that would be my answer to this subtraction problem. However, the book only asks for the LCD, so if you were to answer the book, that would be all you would need. All right, uh, I'm running out of space here a little bit for, for B. I'm getting kind of close to the bottom. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flip to the back just to be sure that I have enough room. So for B, uh, same idea, I'm going to, we're going to do this uh, both ways actually. So we're going to find the LCD and we're going to go ahead and subtract those. So let's go ahead and copy it first. 3x times x plus 4 minus 12 over x squared plus 2x minus 8. So LCD is going to be my x plus 4 and my x squared plus 2x minus 8 prime factorized. 
So right here, uh, you know, I'm just going to put parentheses around that and say that one's done. We can factor that, so he's done. He's just going to be part of the LCD. So down here, I'm going to factor this. So I'm looking for, is there something times something that gives me a negative 8 that when I add them gives me a positive 2? And the answer is yes. If I have a positive 4 times a negative 2, that'll give me a negative 8. And then if I add those, it would give me a positive 2. So my LCD, I'm going to have an x plus 4. And I'm going to have an x minus 2. And so the nice thing about this one is the second fraction actually already has the LCD, already has the, the common denominator. So I only need one form of 1 this time. So I'm going to take my 3x over my x plus 4, and I'm going to need a form of 1 there. And then I'm going to subtract my 12, and then I will put this, though, in its factored form. So once more with our red pen, let's just kind of section that off. So that's technically what the book's asking for, but we're going for a step further. So over here, in order to get the LCD, I already have the x plus 4, so I just need the x minus 2. So this is form of 1, same on top and the bottom. And now let's keep going. Let's simplify this then. So up top, I'm going to have a 3x times x will give me a 3x squared. And then a 3x times a minus 2 will give me a minus 6x. And well, we just got minus 12. And then in the denominator, we have our common denominator. So up top, notice that a 3 can be pulled out of each of those. So I'm going to pull a 3 out. I'll be left with an x squared minus 2x minus 4. So I need to consider, is there something times something that gives me a negative 4? But when I add them, it gives me a negative 1. So if it's a 4 times a 1, we know it's going to be negative. That means when I add them up, we're really going to subtract the numbers. So depending on which one was negative, which one was positive, I could get a positive 3 or a negative 3 from that. If I go 2 times 2, um, again, one of them's got to be positive, one of them's got to be negative. Well, then if you add a positive 2 with a negative 2, you'd get 0, not a negative 2. So it doesn't seem that we can actually factor this one. And so therefore, this is as far as we can go. And so that would be my answer to this subtraction problem. All right, moving on to C. So for letter C, this is just telling us to go ahead and add. So we're going to start by copying the problem down. And we'll have a little less writing this time because we're not doing two different kinds of problems at the same time. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, like we've done before, I'm going to factor these. So that's a difference of squares, so it's going to be a product of conjugates when it's factored. And then I'm going to do times, I'm just going to leave a space for a form of 1. Over here, I'm going to do my x minus 1, and I'm going to factor that. I'm going to have a 4x minus 5, and then I'm going to have a space for a form of 1. So we can hopefully see here that the LCD for this, well, this has a 4. And then we've got x minus 5s, and we have an x plus 5. So you can think through what's the LCD, or another way to do it, like we kind of did with the first one, was just looking at what's missing in each of these. So both of them have an x minus 5, but this one is missing the 4. This one is missing the x plus 5. So those are my forms of 1. Now normally we line up a new equal sign with an old one, and then let's go ahead and simplify. So up top I'm going to have 4 times 3x squared, that'll be 12x squared. And then over here this is plus, so that's nice, so it's just going to go, go across. So plus, and then I've got a binomial times a binomial. So remember in order to multiply binomials we're going to have to FOIL. 
So this is going to be plus outside our first will be x squared, and then outsides will be a 5x, so plus 5x. Insides will be a negative x, so minus x, and then last will be a negative 5. And then my common denominator then will be 4 times the conjugates. And we just need to simplify this and see if we can factor it at all. So I've got an x squared, or 12x squared plus x squared will give me a 13x squared. And then a 5x minus x will be a 4x, and then we have a minus 5. Up top, if I look and see, is there anything I can factor out of all of those? Um, no, we can't. Um, factor anything out of each of those. So next I need to think through is there uh, any way that we can factor this. So uh, what times what could I uh, what could I get for a 13? Uh, what times what could give me a, a negative 5? So 13 is prime. That's kind of nice for us. It means that it's got to be a 1 and a 13 there if we can factor it. Uh, with a negative 5, 5 is prime, so I know it's got to be a 1 on a 5 I just don't know which one's going to be the negative. So if we kind of think that through, 13 times 5 would be 65, and then 1 times negative 1 would be a negative 1. So 65 plus a negative 1 would be a 64. That's, well, that's way too big. Uh, if I switch the negative over to the, the 5 instead of the 1, I'd just get a negative 64. So that's not going to work either. So what if I do... Uh, the 13 here times a 1 over there, well, that's 13, and then 1 over here times the 5 over there, well, that's 5, and again, there's going to have to be a negative on one of those, so 13 plus a negative 5 would be 8, or a negative 13 plus a positive 5 would be a negative 8. So positive 8, negative 8, that's not going to work there either. So we can't factor that anymore, which means... That's actually as far as we go. Oh, and looking up here, I just realized I forgot to circle. That was actually the answer to B. So we got to look through and see, can we factor this? This time we couldn't. All right, D. Moving on to letter D. So for letter D, we're going to subtract 3 or 2x squared. And that is over... 6x minus 24, and we are subtracting from that 3x minus 4 over x squared minus 16. So again, same idea. I'm going to factor that denominator. So I can pull a 6 out of both of those, and they'll leave behind an x minus 4, which we'll multiply by some form of 1. And then we're going to subtract from that our 3x minus 4, and then if I factor that, it's a difference of squares. So that means it's a product of conjugates. And that will be times its own form of 1. So if I look at this denominator and look at that denominator, what I'm missing over here is I don't have an x plus 4 over here. So I'm going to need an x plus 4. And now if I look over here and say, what am I missing from here? Well, this doesn't have a 6. And now we simplify, and so the 2x squared will need to distribute across that whole thing. So it would be a 2x cubed plus 8x squared. And then in my denominator, I'm going to have 6 times the conjugates. And we're subtracting, so we're going to remember, need to remember to distribute the 6 and distribute the minus. So if I distribute the 6, I'm going to get an 18x, but then it'll be a negative 18x. And if I distribute the 6, that'll be a negative 24, but then minus will make that a plus 24. And so I take a look and see, can I factor something out of all of those? Yes, I can. I can factor a 2 out of all those. So if I factor a 2 out of all those, I will get 2 
times x cubed plus 8x squared minus 18x. Oops, sorry. I forgot to actually factor my apologies. Let's try that again. Uh, x cubed plus 4x squared minus 9x plus 12. And that'll be all over our common denominator. So now I can see a 6 and a 2 can reduce, so that'll become a 3. And now I'm going to look at this numerator and I'm going to see, can I factor this more? So remember for this we're looking at our, our grouping technique where we consider grouping x cubed and 4x squared and say what can I factor out of each of those? Well I can factor an x squared out of each of those and that would leave behind an x plus 4. And I look over here and I say okay what can I factor out of each of these? And I can factor out a 3 but it actually since this is a minus it would be better if we factored out a minus 3. So if I, I go to my board here, just to really illustrate what we're doing, what we're thinking. So I got my x cubed plus 4x squared minus 9x plus 12. I'm going to factor that x squared out here. That would leave an x plus 4 behind. And then again, because of this minus, it would be better to factor out a minus 3, a negative 3. And so if I factor a negative 3 out of that, that will leave behind a positive um, 3x. And if I factor a negative 3 out of that, that would leave behind a minus 4. So obviously we can see here these, these are not the same uh, quantity, and so this form of factoring is not going to work here. Which means that this really is finished. I just need to clean it up, write my final answer nicely, and so that'll be a 3 now. And that's the answer. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're, you're catching the, the gist here. There's lots of factoring that you've got to pay attention to. You've got to really pay attention to the factoring. All right, we're going to move on to letter E. Letter E has x minus 1 over... Uh, oops, sorry, no parentheses yet. x squared minus 1. And then I have plus 2 over 5x plus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and factor the denominators. x minus 1 over, and this is a difference of squares. Remember that 1 is a perfect square. And so this will give me the conjugates x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now hang on a moment. Before I even go any further, I've got x minus 1 in the denominator and I have x plus or minus 1 in the numerator. You can go ahead and simplify that because it's all in the same fraction. And that will actually make for a nicer LCD potentially in the end. So now I'm going to have uh, times a form of 1 plus 2 over, factor out there, I'll have 5 times x plus 1. And if I compare these two real quick here, they both have an x plus 1, but this has an extra 5. So really, I'm just going to need a 5 over 5 here, but then those two denominators would be the same. So that's all I need. To finish this up then, this would be a 5 times 1, so that's really just a 5 over x plus 1. And over here, this is really just a plus 2. So in the end, this is 7. Oops, oh, sorry, I forgot about my 5 in the denominator, my apologies. So in the end, this is really just a 5 times the quantity x plus 1 in the denominator and a 7 up top. And there we go. All right. And we're going to do uh, just one more here. We're going to take a look at letter F. So G is a story problem, but it's really just the same as, as what we've been doing. So we'll stop here with F. I have just enough space I think I can get it in. So 2 over x squared minus 36. And we are subtracting from that 1 over x squared plus 6x. 
So same idea. Factor the denominator. That's a difference of squares. So it'll be a product of conjugates. And then I'll have some form of one here. And then we will be oops, not adding, subtracting. Subtracting 1 over, I can factor out an x from there and have an x plus 6 behind. And then I'll need a form of 1 here as well. So again, kind of look at what's missing here. So if I compare this denominator to that denominator, well, they both have x plus 6s, but over here I'm missing, excuse me, I'm missing just the x. And then over here, okay, I now have an x, I have an x plus 6, but I'm missing the x minus 6. So we simplify 2x over x times the conjugates. And then minus, and remember this 1 is now going to distribute to all of that. So really it's just going to be x minus 6. But then this minus is also going to distribute. So it's going to be a minus 1x, or just minus x, and then a minus 1 times a minus 6, so plus 6. Simplify this further, 2x minus x is x, and then we got a plus 6. On the bottom I have an x times an x plus 6 times an x minus 6, and hopefully we're all caught here that the x plus 6 and the x plus 6 will cancel, which leaves me with a final answer of 1 over x times x minus 6. So just to recap, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the key to this lesson is to factor your denominators. So we're really going to challenge your factoring skills. Factor your denominators once they're factored to compare each of them and say, all right, what's my LCD? So what do they have in common? What is each of them missing? From there, you do have to be careful that anytime you're subtracting that your minus distributes to whatever would be here. So this 1 would distribute to the x and the 6, but then the minus would as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our lesson.